Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. Thank you for coming this morning. And you've all heard the expression, it's five o'clock somewhere. Well, it's literally five o'clock in the Czech Republic. And I appreciate our speaker uh, kind of staying after hours over in Czechia to speak to us. Uh, we're very honored to have Dr. Joseph Hynek, a professor of information management at the University of Rada Kralova in the Czech Republic as our speaker. Missouri Southern and the University of Rada Kralova have had an exchange partnership since 2018. We've been exchanging students and now faculty. Our own Dr. Becca Shriver is at Rada Kralova this semester. Dr. Hynek is actually the Dean of Faculty and in Informatics and Management at Radek Kralova, elected by the faculty. In many of the European universities, the faculty elect the, the deans and the, the rectors or the, the presidents. Dr. Hynek also served as rector or president of the University of Radek Kralova from 20, 2008 through 2016. He was elected to two four-year terms by the faculty. We feel very honored that he has agreed to speak to us this morning or this evening as it is in his situation. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Joseph Hynek. Hello, can you hear me? Perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, Missouri. It's a very nice afternoon here in the Czech Republic or Czechia as we abbreviate it. And I'm really pleased that uh, you have come for this presentation. The name is why Missouri Southern State University students should consider a semester abroad at a nice mid-sized university in the heart of Europe. And I will try my best to persuade you that such a decision is a good decision. First of all, I will start if it works with some pictures that you know pretty well, maybe much better than me. But I must confess that I have traveled to United States many times. I love United States and I have toured your country from California to Massachusetts, from Georgia to Wyoming. I visited more than 20 states, but uh, Missouri is still missing on my list, so maybe, maybe next time. And so I know very well that you have wonderful cities, you have wonderful pieces of nature, quite unique, like the Monument Valley. And of course, you have wonderful national parks like Yellowstone, uh, that you can see here on the picture. And I have met many Americans on my journeys and uh, they, of course, were proud of their country. They were surprised to see someone from the Czech Republic visiting so remote places. And uh, sometimes we have discussed with them that United States of America is such a vast country that uh, you, your life is not long enough to tour so many beautiful places, so maybe there is no time to, to visit the other continents. Uh, of course, because I have visited your country so many times, I believe it's quite interesting and important. Home, but sometimes it's really good to, let's say, uh, get out of your comfort zone and to visit some remote places. I have did some uh, small research and I have looked what are the most popular destination for American university students to go to. And uh, of course, number one is the United Kingdom. Uh, G.B. Shaw once said that your countries are separated by a common language but of course you are you are united by common language you are united by common history you are united by common customs despite the fact that they loved their monarchy they love playing some strange games like a cricket but it's the country of beatles and harry potter and so so on so and of course it's easy for you to visit united kingdom 
On the other hand, because of the same language, same culture, maybe this experience is uh, not as, let's say, much rewarding in terms of, let's say, cultural experience and to learn something completely, completely different. Number one on the list of American students, at least according to my resources, it's France, sweet France, c'est la vie. Yeah, France is a huge country with a lot of architectural landmarks, with a well-known cuisine, with a well-known culture and so on, and very good universities. So no wonder that so many American students go to Paris or other places in France. Here, there is, let's say, additional obstacle because French people speak French. So you at least are in a country where English is not a native language. So there is, let's say, some additional cultural experience, except of things that they eat some crazy things like frogs and so on. Number three, it's Spain. Spain is a huge country spanning from Biscay Bay to Mediterranean Sea with a lot of medieval castles, medieval cathedrals, with uh, beautiful landmarks of a modern architectural style. And of course, with a lot of remains of former Moorish civilization that lived on uh, Iberian Peninsula more than 600 years ago, like we can see here in Granada, which is the palace of uh, Alhambra. I think the culture is definitely different. Language is Spanish. I know that in many parts of uh, your country right now, Spanish is also widely spoken, but here, once again, it's a completely different experience than just, let's say, visiting United Kingdom. It's much more, let's say, difficult for students to accommodate in Spain. So if there are so many opportunities to travel to Western Europe, the natural question is, why should we think about Central Europe? Why in particular about Czechia? And why specifically is interesting in Hradec Králové? Uh, I will give you several reasons why I think it's a good idea to go to Central Europe and to Czech Republic. Because it's Central Europe, it means it's centrally located at the crossroads of Europe. Of course, it has a rich history because whatever happens in Europe, it influences its heart and we are in the heart of Europe. I will try to persuade you within those 40 minutes we have today that Czech Republic or Czechia is much more than Prague only because uh, many people who visit our country visit Prague and fly away and I think it's, it's a pity. I will mention a little bit about our culture. I will uh, mention one slide about how easy it is to uh, use the public transportation here. And of course, for students, it's very important to know and to learn how affordable is the living in foreign countries. So this is something I will discuss in coming minutes. So first of all, central location. So here you can see the symbolic map of Europe. Czech Republic is in the middle. You can see our national flag. And uh, those towers, those are the towers of the cathedral here in Hradec Králové, which is right now some 300 meters to the north from the place I am sitting right now, because Hradec Králové is quite compact, compact place. So it's five minutes walk from university campus to cathedral. I have checked the size of Missouri, and I know that the university is located in Joplin, and on the east side of Missouri, there is St. Louis. So if you make a circle of the radius, what is the distance between Joplin and St. Louis, it looks like this on the map. And you will realize that within this radius, there is a Vienna, capital of Austria. There is a Munich, a big city in Bavaria in Germany. There is a capital of Germany, Berlin. Uh, there is a Krakow. Polish historic city, and there is a capital of Slovakia, Bratislava, 
and there is the Budapest capital of Hungary. A lot of wonderful places that it's easy to visit using public transport or within one hour flight from Prague only. If we look, let's say, for a little bit longer distance, because I know that distance in America is something a little bit different that we have in Europe, because your country is really, really big. So I have looked for the distance from Joplin to Denver. So if I make this circle here, you will find that Venice is much closer than it is from Joplin to Denver, Milano, Italian city, Paris is within this radius as well. Brussels, the capital of United Europe. Amsterdam, Copenhagen, capital of Denmark. Warsaw, capital of Poland. And even Roma will fit within this radius. So you can see that if you come to the Czech Republic, you can easily visit plenty of places that are on the list of, let's say, various travel agencies. And it's not a problem to do it with within a student budget. Central location means also something different. I have mentioned that we are the heart of Europe and as with the heart of body, whenever there is some problem with the body, the heart is influenced. So our country has been influenced by many changes and many problems in Europe. So you can see a different map over here. Uh, it's the map, let's say 35, 40 years old. And you can see that at that time, the Europe was divided between two blocks. The red blocks is the so-called Warsaw Pact. It's a, let's say, Russian influence zone. And there is a blue uh, block. And this is the block of, let's say, free Europe, yeah, with the still Western Germany, Germany divided. The black line that goes from uh, the north to the south, it's the Iron Curtain. And unfortunately, we have to live for many, many years behind the Iron Curtain because our country was under the Russian influence and we were occupied by Soviet army. Just to give you an idea how it looked like, our country was surrounded by fences, by wires, and it was impossible for us to travel to Austria. It was impossible for us to travel to Germany, to neighbor countries. And uh, it was made like this just to, uh, let's say, make sure that our people are not escaping from the country. I do remember that there was a very sad joke that I think I will never forget. And it goes like the mom with her small son is standing in front of this fence and they watch, observe the land behind the fence. And small son is asking his mom, mommy, who are the people living behind the fence? And mommy response is, we live behind the fence. We do. And unfortunately, we lived behind this kind of fence for so many years because of iron carton. I have mentioned that we are the country of rich history and whenever we mention rich history in Europe, it goes to medieval ages and to Roman empire and so on. Uh, as Chad said, I am, my background is in mathematics and I've been for many years in management. So don't worry, I will not dwell on history but I will just mention last 50 years, what I have lived through. So I have been born in Czechoslovakia. Czech Republic and Slovakia were still together. We were behind the Iron Curtain. Unfortunately, we were under the Soviet occupation. There was the Soviet army located in, in our country. Then when I was 24 years old, the Velvet Revolution came and we were able to get rid of the communist regime. Czechoslovakia uh, split into the two countries and we joined NATO, European Union, OECD and many other organizations. So let's say within my life, the world and the history in my country completely changed. It was impossible for us 
to visit even the Western Germany. And I have told you that I have been maybe 15 or 20 times to the United States already. Today, we are a part of the free world as you are. And um, it's something still, let's say, fantastic for us because for so many years we have been refused freedom and democracy. Of course, many people know our country because of Prague. Prague is a beautiful city. It was lucky that during the centuries uh, there were, let's say, vice kings who developed this beautiful, beautiful city. There are plenty of beautiful buildings. But as I told you, I think it's a pity that many visitors stay in Prague only. So I promise you this is the last picture of Prague you will see within my presentation. I have mentioned France and France is famous because of castles. French castles are beautiful. They are quite often beautiful from outside because of French Revolution. Many of those castles have been robbed. So quite often there are not too many things to be seen inside and quite often you will find some, let's say, modern art exhibition there. Uh, we were quite lucky that our castles haven't been robbed, so they are beautiful from outside as well as inside. So this is one of them. Here you can see another beautiful castle that looks like an uh, English castle. It has been inspired by Windsor Castle in England because the lady of the owner, she went for education to England and when she came back, she missed British architecture. So the owner rebuilt the castle in the English style. Over here, you can see one of the most romantic castles, which is completely, completely red and it's in, in the middle of the lake. And uh, because we say that Czech Republic is a land of stories, I will just tell you a short story here because there are, let's say, two explanations why the castle is painted in red. One explanation is romantic one because the owner has been so much in love with his woman he painted in red, like a red color of love to show his love to his spouse. The other story is not as romantic. It says that uh, the owner killed his wife and threw her away from the window to the lake. And because there was some blood on the facade to cover his crime, he had to paint the whole castle in red. So it depends which story you might uh, be, let's say, more. <laughs> uh willing to to believe of course we do not have only castles we have beautiful cities that looks like the let's say fairy tale but it's real it's not let's say any uh hollywood or bollywood uh curtain it's real city of telch and we have very similar city of little Michel, just one hour east of our university uh from here uh, this is actually from Little Michel. This is uh, just uh, 40 miles from here. And the funny thing is that this garden with the church, they were forbidden to come during 25 years of my life due to communist regime. It was closed, neglected, uh, deserted. After the fall of communism, it was renovated and today it's a beautiful city that is under UNESCO protection. And actually, because right now the Czech Republic is chairing the European Union, uh, 1st of July, uh, the, let's say, a chairmanship of the European Union has been handed by Ursula von Leyen to our prime minister here exactly in Little Michel. Of course, we do not have only castles and uh, beautiful cities. We are industrial country and we had a lot of heavy industry. So here you can see part of the city of Ostrava, which looks like a natural disaster, and pollution and so on. Uh, I have to say that we were quite lucky that uh, many factories like this were, uh, let's say, destroyed and uh, there are green fields right now, this factory has been kept and changed into a new area for exhibition, concerts and so on. And this area 
is used especially by young people and the tower on the left it's uh, named by Usain Bolt because there is a famous athletic meeting in Ostrava and Usain Bolt felt in love with this special heavy industry area so they named the tower uh, by Usain, Usain Bolt, the American athlete. Here I couldn't resist to give you our version of Horseshoe Bend in Arizona. Uh, of course, there are different colors in Arizona and different colors here in the Czech Republic, but we love it very much. And over here, it's our version of Arches National, National Park. I know that your arches are much more red this is, let's say, much more covered by uh, uh, green uh, leaves of the of the trees, but it's as beautiful as in Utah. Uh, finally, I would like to mention here uh, one sport, uh, let's say, arena, which is about one hour from Hradec Králové. It's the longest suspension bridge in the Czech Republic. It's a completely new attraction that has been open early this year. And because it's the longest one in the world, it made it to the first time of the Time magazine. So if you read Time, you have already seen this bridge a couple of months ago. Of course, uh, we are industrial country. Uh, we produce a lot of cars, uh, not Many of them are shipped to United States because you produce much more cars than we do. But what is, let's say, the main article we send to United States, it's uh, medical instruments and especially the hospital bed. Hospital beds made by Linnet are made here in the Czech Republic. And you can see not only in hospitals, but in every movie and series, uh, whatever it is like uh, uh, doctors or um, uh, what is the name of anatomy, Grace anatomy and whatever. And I couldn't resist to put here the picture of piano because this beautiful piece of piano is manufactured exactly here in Hradec Králové by Petro family company. Uh, there are a lot of US investments here in the Czech Republic. Eaton, it's uh, let's say uh, Smart Energy, Red Hat software company, Honeywell, they are producing uh, some parts of F-35 fighters here in the Czech Republic. It's a top secret. GE Aviation, once again, for uh, aviation industry. And Teleflex, it's once again medicine, some surgery, surgery equipment. Speaking about the culture, I am aware that you will have several lectures specifically focused on culture, but I couldn't resist to mention Czech beer because that's something we are really proud of. And I would like to mention especially two places, which is Pilsen here in the west of the country and České Budějovice down to the south. And I mentioned deliberately because let's say two of those are Czech most famous beers. Pilsener, and nowadays you can find around the world many beers, whatever is the name, behind that it's written Pilsener. So the trademark is used like a mark, like it is as good as Bruft originally Air Pilsen, but the original one is only from Pilsen. And then you can see here two bottles of Budweiser. I know that, of course, Budweiser is very famous in America, but Budweiss, it's the German name of České Budějovice, the town in the south of Bohemia, and that's the place where original Budweiser is brewed and made. And there is an ongoing dispute and legal, legal uh, battle between, let's say, Czech Budweiser and American Anheuser-Busch, because uh, in America they are able to use Budweiser name in Europe, they have to use only but because uh, the Czech company won the trial that it's a regional mark, so it cannot be sold like a Budweiser because it's not made here in the Czech Republic. And uh, so if you can, if you come to the Czech Republic, please do not forget to try the original Budweiser here. I mentioned that it's very easy to travel 
around the Czech Republic here. And the Czech Republic, it's just, let's say, 30% of Missouri state. And here you can see how dense is the uh, railway network here in the Czech Republic. So it's very easy to get from one place to another. And there are regular uh, trains. And of course, on the top of it, there are regular buses as well. So it's easy to travel around our country and it's quite small one. Affordable cost of living. If you come the dormitories right now, the cost is approximately $160 uh, dollars per month. Coffee, depending on what kind of coffee, whether it's a regular or grand or whatever, uh, small one, big one, one to two dollars. We have very cheap beer, very good and still very cheap. One up to two dollars. Big Mac, I have checked it yesterday in McDonald here. It costs three point eight dollars. Public transport is pretty, pretty cheap, so you can travel for 100 kilometers by bus below five dollars and by train below six dollars. And let's say student. Living cost per month is approximately five hundred dollars per month, so I think it's pretty, pretty affordable here. Coming to Hradec Králové, Hradec Králové, it's a regional capital. It's uh, just 60 miles east of Prague with 93,000 of inhabitants. It's a beautiful historic city with a lot of Gothic, Baroque, as well as other styles building. Here you can see museum, which is in Art Deco style, and it's quite famous. So it's in many books uh, that are focused on architecture made by architect Kotiera. Here you can see new piece of architecture. It's actually the bus terminal, and you can see many uh, wires above the bus because it's not the bus, it's trolley bus. We are using trolley buses in, in the city. They run on electricity, which makes no pollution in the city. So the air is very nice here. Uh, this is the picture of one of the parks. And once again, you can see the tower of the cathedral. So this place is just, let's say, 300 meters from the place where I'm sitting right now. Radis Králové is really very nice and green city. And uh, if I go for jogging, it's easy to go to this place. It's right behind the university campus. It's a very cultural city. We have many festivals here and uh, there are many open air festivals. One of the biggest, uh, let's say, rock festivals, rock for people also take place here in Hradec Králové every year. I can remember Green Day visited us, I think, eight years ago. Uh, of course, in the United States, everyone knows the Battle of Gettysburg and there are some reconstruction here in the Czech Republic. Everyone knows Battle of Hradec Králové. It happened in 1866 and every year there is a reconstruction of this battle. Just it's about eight kilometers from the city center. And uh, there are a lot of sports played here in Hradec Králové. People are crazy about ice hockey, football, basketball, volleyball. They are played on very good level here in the city. I mean the national level, but there are plenty of teams for students of the university to join on, let's say, recreational level as well. And not far away from here, just one and a half hour by car, there are giant mountains where you can ski from November to March and the university organizes some skiing trips for students. So it's easy to join the trip and to go for skiing during winter time. Few words about the university. So the name of the university is the same like the name of the city, University of Hradec Králové. It comprises of four schools. We call it faculties and it's faculty of education, faculty of informatics and management, philosophical faculty and faculty of science. Uh, we are young public university. Our size is, let's say, medium size in the Czech Republic, which in our case means something like six and a half thousand students. And uh, of course, 
all of our programs have to be properly accredited on national and European European level. We provide 90 study programs on bachelor, master as well as doctoral level. Uh, of course, everyone around the world is interested in the rankings. So despite the age of our university, we have been able to make it to several rankings to uh, uh, world university rankings. You can see here US rankings as well as UI green metrics. So we are already there and we are proud of it because it's not an easy for, let's say, young developing university to made it to those rankings, international ones. Speaking about English programs, because most of our programs are delivered in Czech for Czech students, but we have also 30 English taught study programs and you can join us for the full degree. You can join us for exchange one semester or the whole year, or you can just come for summer school. Uh, we have usually something like 400 plus students from abroad plus uh, 300 plus students for summer school every year, which is quite a large proportion considering that we have 6000 students all, to, all together. And there are many programs offered by the School of Pedagogy. They focus especially on education, but they have also some disciplines uh, like uh, playing the instruments, singing, creative arts, things like that. Uh, our School of Informatics and Management, we provide programs in informatics, computer science, uh, economics and management and information and knowledge management on different levels. Uh, philosophical faculty, they are uh, strong in philosophy, political science, Central European studies, and they also focused on African and Latin American studies. And finally, our youngest school, School of Science, they are really strong in biology, ecology, chemistry, and toxicology. So if you, let's say, can find something which is of your interest, please consider our university for exchange. I am really proud that as a young and developing university, we were able to, let's say, establish really good conditions for our students. So here you can see, for example, laboratory for chemistry. Once again, you can see the cathedral on the top of the hill, not far away from here. Here you can see uh, the laboratory, or it's actually not laboratory, it's e-sport laboratory, which is here at my Faculty of Informatics and Management. Our students are crazy of e-sports, so that's why we have developed a kind of laboratory for them, for the team to be able to train their skills. And you can see that the design of this laboratory is something like being inside of computer chip, including the lightings and so on. And it pays off because our team won the national championship. So the champions in Counter-Strike Go are from our faculty right now. Um, some summary. I hope that we are very nice international university. We have functional body system, student union, ISEC. So if you come, you will never be alone here. As I explained to you, we have more than 30 programs in English and because we are centrally located, it's a, let's say, great place of traveling. It's easy to go for, let's say, evening performance to Prague and to come back and still enjoy, let's say, cheaper accommodation. It's easy to go for the weekend to Vienna or Paris and still study here in Hradec Králové. And of course, if you come, it's definitely a valuable plus on your CV. If you need more information, please, please look at our website, which is uh, at uhk.cz. You will find everything, everything there. And I'm coming back to, let's say, the original question. Why should Missouri Southern State University students consider a semester abroad at nice mid-sized university in the heart of Europe. So what, what is the answer? My answer is that 
33 years ago, we were under a communist uh, rule. There was no freedom, no internationalization, no University of Hradec Králové, and let's say no reason for you to come to this part of the world and no way for us, almost no way for us to escape. I am really glad and delighted and grateful that it has changed. And today there is international acknowledged and vibrant University of Hradec Králové. And we provide plenty of opportunities to learn, live and to enjoy student life as well as the academic life, because of course we are open also for, let's say, academic exchanges. Moreover, I am really proud that today we are rich enough to be able to provide scholarships to international students, especially to students from poor countries like Sri Lanka, Cambodia, Afghanistan, Pakistan and so on. And today, especially to Ukraine because of because what's happening in that country after the Russian attack, we have more than 30 students coming to the first year this uh, autumn only. Yeah, so there are many more of them here at the at the university. Uh, so my summary would be come to Central Europe. Czechia is a great destination. I know that France is very nice. Of course, you don't have to consider any language restrictions if you go to United Kingdom. But believe me or not, I have been with management of the university for so many years and I have been in touch with many employers, Czech ones, American ones, international ones. And if they look to CV, they look for something special. And if, let's say on your CV is, um, I have visited, I don't have anything against France, but let's say I've visited France. Okay, it's nice, but many Americans have been to France. I think if you look for something different, come to Central Europe and let's say Czech Republic on your resume will be definitely something different. And our university is definitely a good choice. Hradec Králové is a beautiful place. Actually, on this picture, you can see uh, it looks like a small castle, but it's a water power station. It's uh, built in Art Deco style. It has been built by the same architect who built the museum. I have shown you some 20 minutes ago. Two. Conclude my presentation. I have decided to take three rows from your famous poet Robert Frost, who wrote that two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. And this is the great truth. So I hope to see you soon in Hradec Králové. Thank you very much for your attention. And if there are any questions, I will be more than delighted to answer them. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Heinick. And I should point out that some of the students in the audience this morning are going to Czechia for a week in December, mm -hmm. and you may get to uh, meet them. I, I hope so. Uh, Perfect. So a, a, a week in Czechia and then about three days in, in Vienna before the group flies home. So we have six or seven minutes for questions. Who has a burning question? Great. <clears throat> okay, so I know there will be like a lot of classes in English, um, but how many like are there actually offered so we would kind of get a sense of how many options we would have? Uh, I think you would be surprised uh, because, as I said, there are 30 programs that are delivered in English. So 30 programs and let's say we usually have five compulsory subjects per each program. So each semester you will be able to pick up from let's say 120 up to 150 50 subjects where you can decide which course you will go for and it will be delivered in English. 
And of course, we have a brochure with all the all the subjects that are listed there. So it's not a problem to locate it on the internet. If you can't find it, please send me the mail, or we can we can dispatch it to chat because it's available on the on the website. Uh, it's in colors. So yellow is science, blue is informatics and management, green is philosophy, and uh, pink is pedagogy. But for, let's say, visiting students, it's not a problem to pick up the subject from, let's say, School of Informatics and Management and to have one elective from School of Science as well. Yeah, it's very easy. And we are exchanging two students this semester. Uh, one student from Radha Kralova is here and we have a student there, Emily Miller, and they are both being exchanged with the philosophical faculty. So far, we've only exchanged students with the philosophical mm -hmm. faculty and the School of Informatics and, and Management. So we haven't done anything yet with education or science, mm -hmm. but we certainly could. So uh, I have a, a question. Um, how much of a language barrier would our students encounter? <laughs> I know that most of the students at Rada Kralova speak English to some degree, but when the students are out in the community, at restaurants and shops and using transportation. Uh, what percentage would you say of the local population speaks fairly good English? <laughs> uh, at university, it won't be problem at all because all members of staff, they speak English. Uh, the information system is in Czech as, and in English. And at least, let's say, at School of Informatics and Management, because you can't do business without knowing English, you can't do computers without knowing English. So every student, it's compulsory and trans examination to show the proper level of English. Most of the, let's say, secondary school students speak English as well. The problem might be with, let's say, older generations. Sometimes maybe the bus driver will be unable to understand you if you wish to buy a ticket to some, let's say, remote place and so on. But don't be afraid. Uh, as you could see, we have 400 international students who are coming for exchange every year. We have more than 300 international students coming for summer schools and they can survive here without any problem. People here are pretty friendly and helpful, actually like in America, because sometimes it's also difficult for me to communicate with someone in, let's say, North Dakota, if I don't know the exact way or let's say some local differences and so on. So don't be afraid. Sometimes, yes, especially the older generation, they were forced to learn Russian and they couldn't see the reason why to learn the language. They weren't, let's say, good courses of English. So all the generations, they won't be able to speak with you, but you will see they will be pretty helpful. And your and, autumn, your autumn uh, sem semester, oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. Did you want to add something? Yeah, one more thing. If you come at least for one semester, we provide, let's say, optional courses of survival check. Yeah, it's just a survival check. So um, explaining to people how to, let's say, ha say hello, how to order beer, how to ask the driver for the ticket, things like that. So it is it is optional, but most of the students go for it because it's fun to learn a bit of the language. Yeah, I, I would certainly recommend if you go for a semester that you take the survival check course. Anybody else have a question? Mm -hmm. So your semester, you call it the autumn semester. We call it the fall semester. Yeah. Your your autumn semester just started on Monday. Yes. And so our semester dates don't match up perfectly. When does your autumn semester end? It ends before Christmas. So um, I think something like 17, 18 of, of December. And then we have the exam period, which is in uh, January and the first week of February and the spring semester starts the second week of February and it goes till the mid of May. So your semesters are shorter uh, than they are in the United States by a few weeks, correct? Uh, uh, yes, they are. The reason is that uh, despite the fact that we used to live under communist rule, there is a lot of democracy at universities and we have long exam periods. 
Uh, I studied in United Kingdom and uh, there was just one week exam period. We have five weeks exam periods because within our system, by law, the student is granted three attempts to pass the exam. So he can go the first week of January, third week of January, and once again, the first week of February to sit the same exam without any punishment, without anything. It's granted by law. It's not very efficient, but we have this kind of system. So that's why we have long exam periods. And, and if I recall, our students who have gone during the autumn semester, they go home uh, before Christmas and they don't come back then in January to take the exams. They're mm -hmm. able to take the exams being proctored uh, by a faculty member here at Missouri Southern, correct? Uh, yeah, it's possible to do it, let's say, remotely. But also because, you know, uh, Christmas are celebrated in every European country here. So most of our visiting students from Spain, Portugal, France, Germany, they are going home for Christmas anyway. So international students, they are usually allowed to do their exam at least the first attempt before the Christmas. So if they are, let's say, hardworking and diligent, they can go home with all the exams without need to come in January. Mm -hmm. Well, we are out of time. Thank you so much, Dr. Hynek, for an excellent presentation, informative, uh, makes me want to come back immediately. Uh, <laughs> first, I'll, I'll be joining the group in December, but uh, thank you so much, and uh, we will see you in a few months. Have a good evening. Thank you very much. Have a nice day in Missouri. Bye-bye.